The Heresy Accountability Buddies podcast is dedicated to all things Horus Heresy. This podcast delves into the grim dark universe where Primarchs clash, legions rise, and loyalties fracture faster than a land raider's track. But it's not just about the lore of the Horus Heresy. The Accountability Buddies also explore the gaming side of things, from painting and modeling tips to product reviews and ideas to help you in your hobby. So, whether you're a seasoned Forge World veteran or a fresh-faced scout, this podcast is your Vox channel to the galaxy. Expect discussions on lore, modeling, gaming, and maybe even the shenanigans that your hosts somehow seem to find their way into. Remember, in the grim darkness of the far future, there are only two things you can count on. Heresy and your trusty accountability buddies. Welcome to another great and exciting episode of the Heresy Accountability Buddies podcast. For this, our 81st episode, I, John, am joined by... Dan. Duncan. Jack. Jamie. And we've got a lot of stuff coming up this week, including plans for the future. Maybe we're going to fill in some gaps in your social circles this week. Uh, We've got some other stuff going on but before that and before we kick it over to hobby let's take a quick pause to speak to our sponsors do you love resin bases then go to our sponsor elric hobbies for all of your basing and basing accessory needs use code heresy abb at checkout for a discount legendary monument hobbies monument hobbies is a one-stop shop for all of your painting needs use code heresy abb at checkout for a 5% discount on your purchase. Pop Goes the Monkey, find maker of third-party accessory bits of arms, legs, backpacks, and more, where you can get 10% off your first order over $125 with code HERESYABB at checkout. All right, so for hobby this week, uh, coming into hump day hobby time, I was going through and cleaning up a lot of the house. Um, my dad came by and helped me hang up the last two paint rack shelves that I needed. And so I've started finishing off the last bit of sorting there and started getting some paint up. Um, and then I was doing more cleaning around the house and found all those Skatari that I'd been working on a, a while ago. And my friend was over, we'd watch movies and work on models and I slowly devolved into just watch the movies. Uh, but uh, I went ahead and pulled out all the Skatari in there and, Finished off building the last couple that needed assembling for torso wise. And since I'm doing Forge World Metallica, which is like cream colored clo- uh, robes and very dark undershirts and pants, I'm keeping the body separate from the legs. And so I'm working on, I got all those bodies assembled. I got all the cloaks um, gap filled and went about this week trying to find where I put all my arc rifles and other guns that go with those Qatari guys and found them right before we started recording today. Uh, the other thing I'm doing while we're recording and finishing up uh, going into next week is going to be uh, I found all my aluminum barrels. I'm going to find something that works really good for all those Russes that Jack and the crew got me uh, to work good for vanquishers on my tanks. And once oh, from Adepticon a couple years from Adepticon like two years ago. Yeah, yeah, a couple yeah. Of years ago. Yeah, and, and I got them all built up the week before last. We wanted to do an event, so it was nice to get all those assembled, so now I can start working on my uh, militia and solar ox armies to go with the Cobra troops. Nice, yeah, that's nice. Everything I've been doing, Jamie, we missed you last week. What'd you do? So, um, I have been dealing with a lot of stuff around the home. And I've also had a lot of soccer stuff going on. So, uh, up front, I'd like to apologize to everybody for missing the show last week. I know it was our anniversary one, and uh, I just had so much stuff going on, I kind of couldn't do anything with the like, recording ones. So, I'd like to apologize to you all, the host, and the listeners about that. So, that's my bad. No worries about it, brother. It happens. We, we all miss yep. episodes every now and then. So... Um, some people know I've been like really busy reorganizing and, um, gutting my hobby room. I've put some new shelving in and I've been trying to sort through everything and, uh, 
organize it so I can actually find what I'm looking for because there's nothing like going through boxes and just randomly finding four unbuilt Spartans or finding random land raiders or finding random bags of troops that you haven't built and didn't even know you had bought. Yep, so uh, I've been trying very hard this week when I'm not got soccer to go through trash, organize, and stuff like that. And then just to give you an idea, the room I'm in is maybe like 250 to 300 square feet. It's like a converted one half of a garage. And I've taken, I've thrown out three 55-gallon trash bags of stuff. Just, you name it, stuff. And um, so it's almost done. And I've almost got everything organized, but it was to the point where I couldn't get to my paint table. And I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> but yeah, so like everything's pretty much organized. I just need to get something for uh, some of the monument paints that I've gotten recently. And I think I'll be ready to go from then there on. So um, that's that's what I've been up to this week is just trying to get to the point where I can hobby again. Uh, I guess I'll pass it on to uh, let's go Jack. Uh, buckle your your britches, everybody. Uh, I got so much stuff done, I did nothing. What about you, Duncan? <laughs> so, <clears throat> I I actually have gotten a fairly decent amount of stuff done. Um, I'm up to 50 of the World Eater Rampagers assembled. Um, and by assembled, I mean their bodies together, the heads together, the, the torsos on there. Um, their arms and their weapons are on. I assembled the uh, shoulder pads and backpacks separately because I paint them separately. We've got 50 of those guys now ready to go, sitting on their corks, waiting to get painted and get started on. Are those um, the guys with the double white blades? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now, so far, all of them do have double phallus blades. Yeah. Um, but I do plan on building some guys who will have the meteor hammers as well because I have spare meteor hammers and spare world eater bodies and heads. So, yeah, uh, expect lots of, of um, bunny-eared lunatics with uh, nonsense coming out of Land Raiders soon. Um, I've also got the champion guy built for them. Um, I sourced the uh, crest for his head, and I'm very happy about that, how he's looking at this point. Uh, I'm going to get him started painting on him along with them, hopefully this next Wednesday during our, uh, our hangout Wednesday. Uh, I do have 10 more of them that I'm sitting here staring at. Um, they all need to have uh, their blades put on their hands. Um, unfortunately, some of the blades, as I'm sure that everyone out there knows, come bent because resin likes to be bendy. So I'm trying to unbend some of them. Um, and I'll be getting that done and getting these last couple guys done. So I can be a total of, so I can have a total of six squads of 10. Um, my eventual plan is to have 90 of these guys like this in various stages of uh, crazy weapons. So we'll see about that. Beyond that, um, did the hobby hangout this week? Um, planning on trying to do a video. I was hoping to do it this weekend. Unfortunately, that didn't work out for me. But I was originally planning on doing a How I Paint White um, for How I Do the World Leaders. Video. Unfortunately, I didn't get to do that this week because, as I told people in the hobby hangout, I managed to break a tooth and I've been kind of distracted from a lot of stuff because of that because it's been uh, a bit of an ordeal. But um, other than that, I have not done anything else. Um, I think that's everybody at this point. Am no, I Except it is everyone. not. Dan. 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 Oh my goodness, Dan, what heresy-related hobby stuff have you done this past week? So, I have not done any heresy-related hobby, but I have been spent some time at the painting table. I am trying to clear off some other projects I've started, so I have been working on detailing up and getting ready to, hopefully in the next week or so, get off my table um, a set of these six uh, imps from the board game Massive Darkness 2, and uh, which are D&D type models, and um, the four characters my son are using from another board game called ISS Vanguard, which is uh, uh, kind of explore the galaxy, choose your own adventure type board game. And so they're futuristic power armor ish although not 
like grimdark um space marine stuff exactly so i've been working on detailing up those guys to hopefully clear them off my hobby table my goal is i've got just a crap ton of stuff started and i want to get a bunch of it done before i jump back into uh anything new um so i have been making some progress um even though it's not heresy related so yeah something fair enough well john what do we have this week from uh gw and the like minded uh resources out there yeah so this week uh official pre-orders dropped for the uh, legionis imperialis astartes fast attack as well as uh imperialis storm hammers dracosans and dreadnought drop pods uh we also got pre-orders for the dark tide the miniature game and the Velitaris Sentinels and the Artillery Tanks will hit next week officially. So their pre-order was the second week, and then they'll, they'll drop next week. Um, unofficial GW stuff, kind of. Uh, there's a company called Anime Ape that I've ordered some, from some stuff in the past. Uh, they've done some Gundam-themed shirts and coats and things like that that I've liked. Uh, and they dropped a... For Christmas, they did a imperial ugly sweater and it's basically the you know the chinese print it's just a picture on a thing uh they're doing a um, cinco de mayo sale right now up until uh about the day after jack will get this up so i think it goes until like noon on the 6th uh the code anime fiesta 20 all capital letters will get you 20 percent off but they did a coat that's a mechanicus robe uh, so you can look like a tech priest and stay warm I know in America and in specifically in Texas, we're going into the warm season, but it might be something cool to get for next year or to keep an eye on if you want to wait for more sales. Uh, but that's really it from GW and from third parties. All right. So I personally haven't really seen anything, but I haven't been looking much this week about uh, anything new. Um I did see uh, there's been a lot of people talking about the uh, the fanatic paint set from Army Painter. Um, yeah, the uh, Army Painter paints that came out at Adepticon are officially yep. released. So if you've yep. ordered those, you can get them individually or you can run them through them. Uh, I still haven't had a chance to play with mine quite yet. Uh, uh, yeah, I, this week. I haven't gotten any of them. Um, I do have some of the speed paints, but I don't really use them that much. Um, there are a few technicals that they have that uh, have been featured in a couple ads in a couple of places that I've seen, mainly Instagram and Facebook. But uh, I do kind of want to get to try their uh, their their dried blood technical. Um, yeah, that, that, the that local comic right. shop was doing a, a buy two get one free sale for free comic book day this weekend. Oh, and right um, that. yeah, I stopped by and picked up some Ultramarines airbrush paint since I've got all those Marines I want to paint. And nice. um, they had all that Army Painter stuff up there, so I picked up some of the technical speed paints and also their um, their screen colors is what they call them. So they instead of just calling them like reflective clears, they just call them screen colors. So you've got green screens and blue screens and weapon those, glows. And those are the lights. other ones I saw. I, I've just been calling them technicals because they're not standard paints, but now that makes sense yeah. for them being screen colors. Or whatever. Yeah, I thought it was a really cool idea. Um, and they come in a lot of different colors that I'm not used to seeing. Like I'm not used to seeing a purple clear, shiny and, and, uh, the orange is nice. Yeah. Tamaya has been the only one outside of them. That's done in orange. Usually it's yellow, green, and blue is the main colors. So it's nice to see an orange and some of the, those other colors. So I picked up a couple of those. Uh, I left the bloods there since I've got the GW bloods and, uh, green stuff world bloods, but makes sense. Uh, it'd be really cool if someone did like a side by side, especially if they're used to doing a lot of blood. Hint, hint. I was just going to say, I have the, uh, the game effects, the Vallejo dried blood that I've used and is pretty nice. So I didn't know if you had had tried that Duncan. No, I haven't. Um, most of the time when I do blood, I've either used the, uh, the ye generic um, Games Workshop blood, or I've done the uh, the mix of the Uhu glue along with um, the Tamiya okay. Clear Red to create stringy gore. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say the, that Uhu stuff 
Yeah, that that one's that one's a classic. That I, I can't even tell you how long people have been using that one. But um, I'm I'm probably going to pick up some of that uh, some of that dried gore. And since I am doing world eaters, um, mm-hmm. once I get some guys done up, I might give that a shot and do a side by side comparison for us. Yeah, I I I think what when I got it and used it most for was when I did. Uh, the orcs a few years back and i was doing like blood effects there's the the one buggy that has like the meat grinder in the front and so i uh i did a mix of blood for the blood god and the dried blood right so it looked like you had stuff that had been there a little bit longer and then stuff that was like relatively fresh looking um both. i do actually have some of the scale 75 bloods so I'm literally sitting here staring at my extra paints going, hmm, do I have other bloods that I could use to do like a side-by-side that wasn't like two or three total, but like five or six? And I do. So I guess we'll see how that goes. I found when I was doing all the paint reorganizations, I know I panic bought a lot of the secret weapon mecha colors that were going away. And then Vallejo came out with their mecha colors and I got some of those. So I'm trying to keep like just one or two of popular paints on the shelf and then all the overflow is going to go into a big bucket beside it. That's going to be organized a little bit. Yeah. So, I kind of need to get, make like an overflow shelf. <laughs> I will say yeah, don't, get the, don't get from my experience, don't get the Vallejo Mecca colors. Um, I've got their fluorescent green. And another oh one yeah. It's, it's you've got to really kind of test them out. Uh, I really like their, um, their gunmetal replacement was really good. And then they're flat, uh, the big flat. I didn't try the little flat. I don't know if they're different formulations or not. And then some of the blues were really nice that I tried out for some of the other stuff that I was painting. Yeah, yeah I got their their darker silver, which I guess is their gunmetal replacement, and that's not bad. But yep. I also don't use it anymore. I've literally switched over to, um, right now, My the primary silver I've been using is the uh, uh, Vallejo Acrylic Metal Color Steel. Although I mm-hmm. do need to get some of the magnesium. From uh, our friends over there at Monument, and see how that works out for me. We'll see. But uh, yeah, that, that, I haven't really seen anything else hobby wise that's been dropped from anybody. Well, since no one else, else is dropping that... hobby stuff, maybe we should take it upon ourselves. We uh, we probably could do that. We probably could. That's an amazing that. idea. I mean, it's not like we don't have a fairly healthy community of hobbyists and a fairly healthy cast of hobbyists here on the show itself who can all pass along stuff. I mean, we've we've done, what, three hobby episodes at this point? At least. At, at least, We yeah. hobby in every time, yeah. We do. We do indeed. Um, so why don't you discuss what you want to talk about with in relation to our thing, and I'll, I'll bring on the future. Sure. So, as uh, two things that I personally have to announce. Uh, number one, our Accountability Buddies, the Heresy Accountability Buddies podcast uh, shop has closed temporarily. Um, we did not plan on keeping it open all year long. Um, and since Adepticon and Con season has, for the most part, passed us on, um, and we've sold a fairly decent amount of stuff, and that's all gone to John. Uh, when you say thank you to everyone who has purchased shirts, uh, hoodies, et cetera, through there. Um, but we have closed the shore, closed the store for right now. Uh, we will be reopening the store in November once we have new artwork that will be available on T-shirts. Um, posters are available still. But we will be reopening the store in November once we have new artwork available from the show. Um, if yeah, anyone yeah. is looking for a pin in the meantime, though, since those were not on the store, uh, PM me directly until I can get something else worked out. Yes, same with uh, posters. We still have posters available, yep. um, but the shirts will not be temporarily. Now, if we get a great hubbub of everybody's or a, a number of people go, ah, I need to get a shirt, I need to get a hoodie, what have you. Yes, we can reopen the store, but it will be a temporary thing. Um, hey, I missed out. It's I'm just gonna wait. So we're 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 okay. Fair enough. <laughs> uh, additionally, uh, we will be doing some more artwork, as we seem to have been doing fairly well with that. So we will get some new artwork this uh, ne- this fall. Um, not quite certain what the artwork's gonna be. Um, if you are not yet a patron, uh, if you join into the patron 
if you join our patron, you can actually get to see our ideas and thoughts being talked about when we are coming up with what the next artwork batches will be. Um, and our patrons will have some influence onto that going forward. Um, possibly the patrons may be polled to, uh, to, to uh, get the idea for the design of one of the posters specifically and get a copy of the free poster themselves. We will see. That might be a strong hit. <laughs> that that might be a very strong hint. Um, but addition, additionally to that, we've been doing uh, hobby hangouts on Wednesday or uh, hump day hangout or whatever people have been calling it. Um, and that's been going strong. This past week, we had a few less than normal. We only had 12 or 13 people there. Um, but we've been getting a strong turnout. I think we've had 21 at one point now. Yep. Um, and we've had a number of people who've been helping others with uh, various bits of, of both hobby suggestions and how to paint this style, how to do this style. And I really want to embrace the community and say thank you all who have been showing up for helping others who are newer to the hobby or who don't have as much experience in certain areas as they do. Um, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I'm hoping to keep this going and building going forward. Um, we do have the uh, the class hangout channel for when, um, for example, Mike, who I talked about last week, did the uh, did the class on faces. Um, we are hoping to have a couple other classes running here soon. Um, those will be using the class hangout channel. Those will be probably done on Wednesdays as well, so we can keep everything on a uh, on a schedule. But we are wanting to do uh, an introductory course to how to use an airbrush, and then how to blend with an airbrush um, because those are two things that I think, I think a lot of people need assistance with is just getting the airbrush in their hands and getting the experience they need. I'm not saying I'm going to run the classes. I'm not saying who will or will not run the classes, but I know that there are a number of people who have said they would be happy to assist in that way. There are several and, people that are very overly qualified to do that as well. Yes. Yes, so. they are. Um, and I know for a fact that there are people out there who are new to airbrushing who would probably benefit and would like to seek that out. Um, again, the Hobby Hangout is absolutely free. You just got to come up and show up, and those classes will also be absolutely free. Um, and are we, I mean, good chance that we'll hang out just because free. of the amount of... Take as many as you want. Yes. And I was going to say, there's probably a pretty good chance that with the airbrushing stuff that we'll move it into a separate... Uh, room, especially yeah. if it's on a Wednesday, just because of everything that's going on in the other one, so that yep. your people are not cross talking. So, yeah, and that is yeah, we did that with we the, the class. That's what we have the class hangout channel for. We have uh, the hobby hangout channel and now the class hangout channel, so it'll be used for that. Um, we're also hoping to have uh, a couple more introductory videos of how various people, um, including ourselves and others from the community, paint various types of lesions or what have you. Um, as mentioned, I've done, or I'm planning on doing the How I Paint the World Eaters. Um, I've already done a How I Do the Sons of Horus Green. I'm sure that given how many Ultramarines players we have in this yeah. group, we can get at least one of them to speak up and say, hey, this is how I do uh, paint Ultramarine blue. Um yeah, I did my tanks. I'll probably do, when I start painting infantry again, I'll do one on infantry since I I like to add a couple of other kind of low-light colors in that so to bring out some liveliness in them. I'm the same way. When I paint tanks, I paint them slightly different than I paint uh, my infantry. But that's the same yep. across, I think, most people. And, I mean, I... I also... <laughs> oh, hey, Brian. Oh, of course not, Brian. And by the way, hello. Hello, Brian. Hello, y'all. So, like, just because of the amount of armies that I've painted, like the different armies and stuff, I think as I I think the last time I counted, there was only two or three legions that I haven't painted yet, like styles of legion. Like I easily can do some of the oddball ones or some of the ones that like people haven't, like that we don't have a lot of people that have done them before. So makes sense. Well, I'm just saying. I mean, I I have a little experience. I have a large supply of paint, so it's not a big deal. Gotcha. Uh, one thing I'm also going to say is the uh, thank you for everybody so far who has participated in the contest this month mm -hmm. for the Table of Terrain. We have a number of seriously quality entries. Um, voting if for those, voting for the contest is entirely community-driven. 
Um, we are not picking a winner. We are not going to randomly draw a winner. We're going to leave it entirely up to the community to determine who they think had the best bit of fluff and the best bit of uh, stuff posted in that uh, in those topics. So and the anyone who wants will be read out by JP on the podcast. Oh, did JP finally agree to that? JP agreed. Wonderful. Yay! Thank you, JP. We appreciate it, sir. Um, so yes, we would like whoever is interested in voting to go to the contest channel in the Discord and um, put a thumbs up on the one that you want to pick. Um, I don't care if it's the same one that you entered. You can vote for yourself. It's not going to hurt my feelings. Um, just please understand that this is a serious thing. The winner is getting a serious table worth of terrain that John is painting up for us. Um, and speaking about John painting up that that terrain for their table, John, you want to talk to us about that? Yeah, so I went out and I found... Uh, so everyone knows I like to frequent the store called Daiso, and they do a lot of uh, different hobby things in the store. Uh, it's basically a Japanese dollar store, but they've got a lot of different things for home design and repair and things like that. Uh, and they have, it's it's like a wallpaper for your backsplash in your kitchen that can be easily taken down and up, but it's got a texture to it. And so it looks like tile uh, and little bitty quarter inch tiles in normal scale look like paving stones in 40k scale. So I picked up a bunch of those. Uh, and I also ordered some plastruct interior carpet designs as well as some oddball, different things like that. Uh, I've got large files that I'm building of propaganda posters, including our own posters, as well as some of the other ones that I found online that are going to be printed out and put in there. Uh, and then again, all the paint that I've been organizing, and a lot of that's going to be used in there as well. Um, so we're using, it's going to be a complete six by four table of death ray designs, city terrain. Uh, the bases are probably going to be the only thing that's going to be textured, where then the buildings themselves are going to be trying to kept as flat as possible to keep uh, as much modularity in the system as possible. But I'm going to be doing a kind of a walkthrough as I work through and paint on the terrain and, and work it out. So we'll have video of the entire process going up. So that way, if there's any questions or, you know, if who, whoever wins, if they want to change something as I'm going through, they can PM me and we can work things out as well. Nothing crazy. You know, you're not going to get a whole blown up warlord in the middle of it, but uh, you know, if you like certain colors more. That makes sense. And again, thank you to our friends over there at Death Ray Design for the donation of this table. Um, Dan, you have, I believe, the uh, the mat for this table as well. Is that correct? Yes, I do. And who did the mat come from for this giveaway? Um, table War, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I, I wanted to go with their old name, but it's Table War now, yeah. Okay. Well, so uh, thank you to Table War for the donation of the mat for this as well. Um, it's uh, much appreciated. I'm sure that whoever ends up getting this set will be pretty happy with what they pick up. Um, so uh, we had talked about some stuff that we want to do going forward. John had some pretty neat ideas on things. So, uh, John, take it away, sir. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Thanks. So I, I think we all do miss Heresy Thursday. Uh, it was a real way for the community to kind of come together and, and wonder what's going to be happening going forward. And ironically enough, you know, we formed um, Painting Hump Day Wednesdays. So in my opinion, I think it's time that we combine those. And I think that it's time that the community steps up and kind of fills in the gap where GW has really kind of let uh, the community suffer in this instance. And so uh, to that going forward, we're going to start having accountability, accountability Thursdays. And so every Thursday, on Instagram and on the Facebook feed for the Accountability Buddies podcast, we're going to go through and make a post of everything that's going to be going on in the update painting chat. So whether that's what people are working on, uh, what's going through different things, you know, we want to make sure that the the community can understand, you know, what we're doing going forward and how everyone can work together. So what we're going to do is we're going to make sure that everyone in the community can get a, you know, a a contributing factor into this. Um, that's going to be the majority of Thursdays. 
at the end of each month, what we're going to do for accountability or accountability Thursday is do an army choice. And so we'll start off that uh, probably with one of the hosts. Uh, Jack or I already have army pictures taken. Uh, we obviously have done stuff since then, so we need to add on to that and kind of go through and, and talk about a couple cool units and then go through that. Uh, but I think, you know, going forward, we can allow, you know, non-hosts to come in and submit pictures and submit stories behind what they're doing or, or how those things have come about. And that way, every, you know, end of the month Thursday is going to be a, a focus, not just on the community itself, but also a larger focus on you know, how that has come together, how those people have, you know, the, the journey of a thousand miles begins with the first step. But, you know, at the end of the journey, you kind of want to see where you've come from. You want to get an understanding of, you know, this is what I've worked on for the last six months every Thursday or every Wednesday, and this is where it's gotten me. You know, what does that look like? What does that entire process look like? You know, heresy armies aren't going to be super small, you know, even if you're going to run the crazy uh, all oops, all sentinel list that I've been working on, that's still, you know, 25 sentinels and 10 Russes. That's still a lot of models, even that, even just in that. And that doesn't include some of the infantry that's needed to, to unlock those things. So, you know, at the end of the day, you've got a lot of, we've got a lot of money invested in these. We've got a lot of time invested in these, um, you know, outside of our normal day-to-day -day job and normal family time. So it's good to kind of look back and see where you've come from and what you are capable of achieving with, you know, support from your friends and from dedication and hard work. Yeah, I mean, everybody knows that putting forth the effort into your hobby to get your hobby up to the next level is, it, it takes time, it takes effort. And I'm not saying that any single person in here is ready to win the Golden Demon. I know I'm not. Um, yep. So we're not the best out there. We don't even know who the best are, to be honest. We have each got our own styles. We each have our own things that we do. And we understand that there are people out there who, like, for example, Matt Kane, friend of the cast, um, who are amazing and phenomenal in the stuff they put out. Um, we also have other people out there like John Lenz, uh, Sam Lenz's brother, and Sam Lenz himself, who also put out amazing work. Um, we don't intend to say we are the be-all, end-all of heresy. We don't intend to say we are the, the arbiters of what is awesome and cool. We just want to help other people build their hobby up to a level that they are personally satisfied with or help them grow skills that they don't feel they have. And showcasing things like this will let us kind of inspire others. And Hey, this person has now showed up in the hobby hangout to explain how they did whatever effect or how they built this or why they did that. Um, case in point, something that came up last week in the hobby uh, hangout Um our, my friend Trevor was talking about something to build a demon um, for demons for his list. And we got to talking about some of the other fantasy models out there and the Morgast Archai and how some of us have originally thought about doing demon princes out of that for uh, with how their armor looks kind of Space Marine-esque for boniness. So just passing yeah, on things like that. I went on a tangent with that as well, talking about the ideas I had for my Umbra demon list using yep. the, the kind of warp fiend critters that are just basically balls of glass that summon darkness around them and then shape that. And so my demons were going to be formless entities that were nothing but tentacles and teeth. And so a lot of Shoggoths, a lot of um, nameless fiends from every company out there, you know, a lot of different ways to, to do that. And I had a document that I sent over to him. That was just all the different models that I thought would fit along with that. Yep. And he and I have actually been talking about stuff since then. Um, we talk on a regular basis anyway, but he's looking for uh, doing like Eldritch horror slash abominations for his demons. And I think that's really neat the way he's got them ideated and conceptualized out. And yeah. And y'all don't, you know, they don't, people don't have to use our ideas, but it's just the way that the community can come together and say, Hey, I'm thinking about this. What do y'all think? Do you have more ideas? Like for instance, I, um, GW does not make a photon gauntlet pistol, uh, for Mechanicum and, uh, yep. it's everywhere. Every character can take the blasted thing. And so, uh, working on these Katari characters for the Titan guard list, their Lord can take a photon gauntlet. 
And so um, we looked around the internet, found some ones that could be 3D printed and found some ones that might work as uh, decent plastic replacements. And so just working on which one of those I want to use more. We're going back to the uh, demons. It, I always enjoy reading the segments they have in the books, both 40K and in the 30K realm, where you're on a ship and the Geller fields go down and all the wild, crazy stuff that happens. It really is a world is your oyster kind of situation, and there's so much potential. Yeah, they go a little off topic. I like, you know, watching anime a lot and Berserk when they go into the the crazy eclipse world, like all those weird demons. Like there's ones that look like people from a far away because they're kind of like anglerfish. They're tempting people in, and there's ones that are just geometric shapes that vibrate. Like there's a bunch of weird places you can go, you know, Bosch paintings and things like that that you can kind of pull demon ideas from yeah and, and there's there's all kinds of stuff out there that you could use to create weird nonsense stuff um i hate mentioning this model i truly do but i mentioned it to trevor the other night uh the wet nurse yeah i'm sure that people out oh, there know no. what that model is um i mentioned definitely that not a uh, definitely not a uh, pg Safe. model yeah, no, that is not a safe-for-work model if you are anywhere near a computer or a source that you can Google that. Um, I recommend not looking that up on a work computer or a work phone or when children or people who you actually care about their opinions of you are present because that thing is an atrocity. <laughs> a lot but, of uh, Kingdom Death models are kind of up that alley. Yeah. I think I've got the one safe-for-work model in The King. <laughs> it's a giant guy made out of babies. Yeah, yeah, that's a little a, 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 a incognito or private privacy mode when you go to that website. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. King of Death got some one model. There. One model I wish I had that I I don't even know where to find it anymore because Malifo re-released it with a new variant in plastic, but it was the oh why am I drawing a blank now? <sighs> anyway, one of the factions could take this. Uh, model in it like had a it could transform into anything so the front side of the model was a woman and she's got like a a towel or robe draped across her front and the whole back side is like completely flayed open muscles bone sinew yeah, yeah and I've that, seen that. I'll, I'll send you a link to it if you need to get one it's an awesome model yeah there's there's a there's another thing i meant to mention to trevor that i forgot but um one of the guys who used to design the demon line for uh, GW had actually designed Malal demons as well. Um, and there are people out there who have now started producing those models. And I don't have the link for them immediately handy, but I have it bookmarked somewhere. And it looks, they look really unique and really cool compared to other, uh, I would say, generic 40K demons, if that makes sense. Um, they're definitely interesting. And there's a lot of interesting stuff out there that people could sit there and say, hey, this is a killer demon. I haven't seen him around Sorry. anywhere, but I still have the old uh, metal beasts of Nurgle that are the kind of slug with the big tentacles up in the front of them. They're on like the, the long skinny bases. I remember those. Those were disgusting to look at. Yeah, yep. I have five or six of them still laying around. Yeah, the uh, the ones I was thinking about are called Demons of Malice. Um, they were absolutely really strange to look at from his drawings. But uh, Realms of Chaos 80s is doing some of those and some other stuff. And, and they look absolutely odd. There's things that look like horrors. There's things that look like um, multi-legged carapace beetles with pincers things that look like a kind of half cornate and half lizard man-esque there, there's just a lot of weird stuff that they did but things like that i think would actually look cool as i'll get out for it but yeah anyway getting back to the topic um this is not us saying that we're arbiters or everything cool this is just us trying to promote more stuff since gw and their wisdom doesn't want to do Heresy Thursdays right now. Yeah, I mean, like, we all kind of agreed in the background that 
the heresy since the heresy Thursdays kind of like hadn't been going on. It's not that it not just the new releases, but just it's not uh, it's the the chatter for people just discussing stuff in general has died down because of not having that there. Yep, entirely. Um, if if GW isn't pushing stuff immediately that reflects to heresy, people don't seem to quite have as much engagement. So this is us attempting to bring people some of that engagement just by being hobby positive. Yep. Yeah, we're not going to write rules. We're not going to come up with nope uh, crazy stuff off the blue. But I think that we can all definitely, you know, have untapped thoughts and knowledge of, of crazy hobby ideas and you know everyone's doing cool con conversions you know and, and like duncan said even if you don't have the what you think is the best painted thing out there everything you know can have some inspiration to somebody there's always parts of things that you can pull from you know and i got the idea for the acupunctures as um aerials and and uh, wires as from someone who didn't think that they were that good at painting. They just said, Hey, you know, I, I work at a, a shop and I have a bunch of these left over and I started using them for stuff. And I was like, man, that is a great idea. And yep. I started stealing it and, and recommending it to other people. So, you know, whatever, you know, you can always contribute something to the hobby of everybody else. There's never a reason to look down on anybody in, in your area. Yep. And uh, I will say this. Um, I am still working actively on the proposal for us to do kind of a campaign through the cast um just to get people try to actively play go out there and play games with one another um it's not ready for for prime time yet um but brian has been working with me on it and i appreciate the heck out of that so we'll hopefully have more effort worked on that in the next couple of weeks so we can get that closer to being announced Like all, but I've always marched to my own hobby drum. <laughs> what do you mean by that, sir? I don't know. Just take a project and run with it. I don't need announcements from Games Workshop to feel an impulse or a need. Usually I draw inspiration from games I've played or fellow hobbyists. I've found that I usually work towards events. Like I'll hardcore crammed to Adepticon or something else. And if I'm starting to do like I am right now, or I'm spinning my wheels and not working on a project for something, uh, I start getting a little despondent and I start working on 12 projects at once, which is kind of what y'all can tell by working on militia and Skatari and Marines. Uh, and so if, if I don't focus in on something, I end up going too many directions at once. It does remind me I do need to knuckle down and work on some stuff for my next event coming up here at the end of the month. Oh, what event do you have coming up at the end of the month, sir? I have the second quarterly event for the Michigan area, or even friends that are willing to drive to Michigan, on the 25th of this month. And what is that event called, sir? Operation Stardust Night Raid. Cool. Spoilers. Bring night vision. <laughs> and where will that be taking place? It's going to be hosted at Hoplite Games' new store location on Michigan Avenue in Lansing, Michigan. I believe the address would be 2024 or 2020. I don't remember which one. 2024 might be the current store. Okay. All right. I got I got a whole bunch of new terrain for this, a whole bunch of new mats from everybody's favorite table war. Nice. Very nice. And it and should be a good Ferex, time. Yeah, Ferrix is running uh taking of Ferrix presents the depths of Spirit and four which is going to be run at the Texas Open June 8th through June 9th, uh, 8th and 9th. It's a two-day event. Uh, I'm going to definitely be there on the first day. I've got a work event. They shipped me off to Denver for the next week, so I'll have to duck out a little bit early on Sunday. But uh, it's a 3,000-point event that's coming up on June 8th and 9th, and the tickets are already up 
Well, this is in Kansas City. And so cool. I'm looking forward to anyone that can meet up there. Um, I know there's an event coming up with the Battle Barn uh, oh. on June 15th. Um, it is the second event for the 2024 Battle Barn Heresy season. Um, three rounds, start doors open at nine, dice roll at 10, lunch at one, uh, prize and raffle for prize drawings via raffle system, no later than seven, uh, entry fee, 20 bucks. Um, points are 2,500 with a two 500 point sideboards. Um, the first game will be 2,500 points. The second and third rounds will be 3,000 points using your sideboard stuff. So there's that there. Um, hopefully I can get up there this year um, or up to that event. Uh, I think Jack and I are both hoping to. Um, may get my buddy Trevor to travel up there with us. We'll maybe get my buddy Corin to come up there. We'll see. But definitely looking forward to that as well. Is that Nick uh, right now still? At the yep, battle barn, that is, uh, that is Nick and uh, Nick and Lemmy are running that one. Nick always puts on good events. He does. Oh, sorry, Texas Open is in August twenty third through the twenty fifth. The other ones, the can the Kansas City one's the one on June eighth and ninth, which I'm gonna have to skip. Gotcha, gotcha. Oh, and the... uh, last week, not this yesterday, but the week before, we actually had the latest uh, Kentucky thirty k meeting. Um, a couple of us showed up. I didn't get a chance to have a game, unfortunately, but uh, I saw people playing games. Um, stuff that uh, they used uh, random objectives, and they asked me to use a uh, to choose what they are. And instead of choosing what they are, I went off the system I came up with for the um, the Iron Halo um, kind of Centurion game that I came up with, um, and that was kind of neat, kind of fun. Hope they enjoyed that. So the, the go ahead, Brian. Was that the one you and I talked about a while back? Uh, the one where everybody has uh, basically a four by four board, and then you have basically you're playing Quake. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yep, that's a fun one. Yep. Yeah, that was kind of interesting. So we'll see what goes on. Uh, I, I may still work some more on that. I don't know. We'll see. So uh, the ahead, Bama man. Heresy, the Bama Heresy groups got their uh, event coming up on June first up in uh, in Madison, Alabama, which is just on, it's the suburbs of Huntsville. Uh, Bama Blake and Christopher Bergeron are putting it on. It's at High Ground Hobbies. It's uh, two to four rounds at three thousand points, and there's also going to be a Mega ZM battle at a thousand points, uh, and it's a ten dollar entry fee. I know from talking with Blake and uh, Christopher, I think it's over. It's two third. All the spots they have, two thirds of them already been booked up. So, mm -hmm. if y'all are, I know there's a couple people coming in talking about coming in town, like Jake from uh, Chattanooga, and I think Joe from uh, Nashville is talking about coming down as well. So, uh, you know, a little bit of a southeast flavor going on up there that that first week in June. I'm nice. going to do my best to make it up, so. Sounds like fun. I hope you get to go. I hope that uh, you don't have any more bouts of the horrifying sickness that you seem to, <laughs> your, your house seems to propagate. The issues I'm having more now is that my wife's, because of what's going on in the hospital, my wife's having to work a lot of uh, weekends right now, so I have to take care of the kids. It's always fun taking three, three, three kids to th uh, three separate things at the same time. So, anyways, I can believe that. Um, anybody else got anything going on, or are we kind of sitting here treading water? Guess we're treading water. <laughs> yeah, I think we're good for now. We, uh, we do want to go back to the Legion overviews and some of the other things that we've kind of started going forward but we were definitely wanted to get a an announcement out for our heresy thursday plans yes we did um i had originally planned at the beginning of the year and i know i had announced or talked about wanting to um when they did the the last of the end of the death volume three i wanted to talk about going back and rereading the entire heresy novel series and getting 
back into that and start doing book reviews and stuff. But honestly, I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, I don't. I have been reading them some more. I don't think I want to get into the reviews of them because I'm going to throw this uh, shout over to our friends at Legion Cast who are doing phenomenal book reviews. Um, and I don't want to try to think that I'm doing it better or would be trying to do it better because they're so very involved in them and their reviews are so in-depth that I cannot even hope to come close to how they're doing it. So uh, kudos yeah, I will to you guys. Say that I... Y'all are awesome. I really like their, yeah, I like their podcast. I've been going through and I've been having to do a lot of cleanup with uh, Christina's stuff and, and everything else in the house. And I've burned through the first 20 episodes of their podcast. I started from the beginning and, and listened all the way up through uh, the first 20 episodes this week. They're very solid show. I enjoy listening to that as well. Um, I also enjoy going back and listening to some of our other friends um with their casts uh i'd love to say i, I go back and listen to uh the new rfi cast but i can't and it hurts me deep in what little soul i have left and sadly eoh has done the same thing i horace hasn't really posted much since their mechanicum overview which well, i like and i've listened to a couple of times it's only the main mechanicum book it doesn't talk about knights or the titan guard or you know the armies that i'm playing or want to play Next, I mean, I'm going to do the the main Mechanicum book after this stuff, but come on, guys, do the rest of the book. Maybe we should we should uh, get hold of Eric and see about having him back on. Yeah, get Tim on. Yeah, that'd be nice. But I would like to broach uh, the thought of something Duncan and I have been discussing about touching on topics such as making a better battlefield for yourself, uh, making and writing missions that are compelling and interesting to play. And I'd be interested to hear from our listeners about any thoughts or further ideas about those kinds of subjects, because that's great content. And I, I know I've had many discussions with people over the years in the groups at large. And uh, if there's anything somebody would like specifically brought up, uh, we'd love to hear it. Throw it out on the Discord. Yeah, that makes uh, perfect sense. Um, I will also say there's a couple people out there who run events. Um, Nick and Lemmy, who are running events up in Indiana. Um, Mace down in Tennessee, who runs events uh, with the Circle City, sorry, the Scenic city heresy group down there um and the music city heresy guys and lucas and our friend ben over with nova i just i'd like to hear and see more people's ideas on what they think makes a great mission or what they think doesn't make a great mission and what they like seeing and don't because of uh difficulty with tracking it in games i'd like to hear the the community's thoughts on what they like in missions other than just the kind of base book missions and the the expansion ones that we've gotten from the uh the two campaign books now. I will say I do like the look of what we are seeing out of the beta garmin missions a lot more versus the original missions that were in the Heresy 2.0 rule book which were just kind of rehashes of what we had. Disney. I will agree there entirely. I worry a little bit about as demons become more popular, how they're going to be affected since they only start becoming less effective on turns five and six. And the game is usually in by turn four. Um, but then that goes again with the, how it affects assault armies and stuff like that too. Okay. Um, I have thoughts on demons and I'm really just not quite certain on how to respond to them. Certain things about the demons feel a little off to me, but that's just, I think it's mainly that I can't wrap my hands around all the, uh, the providences and, and how they function differently and everything else. It just feels strange to me. If that makes any sense. Yeah. There's a lot of lines in there. Of, uh... Uh... It reminds me of the old cult and militia list from 1.0. Yeah. 
there's so much going on. It's like, okay, what? Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I've gotten my mind mostly wrapped around the Black Shields bit because really you just pick the two and then you roll with that. But the demons yeah. bit, it just seems a bit with the plus one first, with it, two turns yeah. and then nothing the second two turns and then a negative on the last turn. It just, that seems yeah. like the way everything else especially works, when you com- weird. Yeah, especially when you combine it with like how the, you, how some armies can add to them. And this kind of comes back to militia too because I was looking a lot into the uh, they've got the rogue psyker that can summon in a bunch of demons as part of a an HQ choice just for traders. And while I don't think I'm going to go traders, uh, it was just something that I kept looking into. And then they've got weird things in there as well. It's just, it, I don't know, militia for me have really worked because I've usually just picked one way to build the list and gone forward. And since the, they've kind of made that type of list obsolete, I've just been having to do a lot more looks at different ways to build a list and trying not to give myself analysis paralysis by just staring at the book for, you know, 45 minutes to an hour at a time, uh, slack jawed and wondering what I should build. Uh, I'm trying to just pick a couple models that I think are cool and try to build armies around it. Hence the, the Sentinel force and the, um, the Ogre in force. Yeah. One of these days I'll sit down and actually fully paint up the, Hilarious shenanigans, absolutely just meme militia detachment with uh oh what were the names of the two provinces you could take? It basically you make the uh inducted levy troops zombie ask mm-hmm. and you know make it into combat, roll one bucket of dice and kill five assault marines or something. It just makes me yeah. laugh. Yeah. Anyway, I think we're mostly just treading water at this point. So, uh, any objections to calling it here? Nope. Absolutely. So, thank you, gentlemen. Uh, always remember to stay accountable to yourselves and to your buddy. And join us next time on the Heresy Accountability Buddies.